Is it possible to travel faster than the speed of light? Albert Einstein would likely say no if he were alive today, and he would be the person to ask because scientists have taken his word for it ever since the early 20th century. However, NASA just announced that its new rocket engine could travel at 99% the speed of light. Stay tuned for more information. Humans have been curious about life beyond Earth for centuries. Our concern for the environment is growing rapidly today. Even billionaires like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk want to learn more about life in space. As a scientific community, we have continuously adapted and overcome any difficulties when it comes to space exploration, whether it's the Cassini space probe or NASA's Dragonfly mission. Even so, there has always been one seemingly impossible task that we have only dreamed about – light speed. It is true that we have been able to peer into the cosmos, land a man on the moon, send probes beyond our solar system, just to name a few. But despite all these accomplishments, there has always been a seemingly impossible task that we would only dream of – light speed. In Einstein's 1905 theory of special relativity, nothing can exceed the speed of light. Einstein explained that speed is a fundamental constant of nature, appearing the same to all observers. According to the same theory, objects gain mass as they accelerate, and accelerating requires energy. The more mass, the greater the energy required. According to Einstein's calculations, at the speed of light, an object's mass and the energy required to accelerate it would be infinite. There is no way to exceed this limit. Donald Schneider, professor of astronomy and astrophysics at Penn State, said that theoretically strange things happen when you exceed the speed of light. Schneider uses an example of hitting a target with a gun that shoots bullets faster than the speed of light. Some observers would see the bullet hit the target before they saw the shooter fire the gun, he said. Since one of the guiding principles of relativity is that all physical laws are the same to all observers, this violation of causality would be a big problem. Tachyons are another oddity. Gerald Feinberg, a physicist at Columbia University, proposed the existence of these particles in 1967. It would require infinite energy for tachyons to slow down to the speed of light in their mirror world above the light speed barrier. There have also been suggestions for wormholes, which are shortcuts through space-time that would permit faster-than-light travel, and for warp drives, which would create a bubble in space where relativity would not apply. However, tachyons, wormholes and warp drives remain speculative, and many physicists dismiss their significance. There has been at least one real-world example of superluminal or faster-than-light travel. It occurs when light travels through water. NASA recently announced that their new rocket engine could travel at 99% the speed of light, which seems to challenge Einstein's theory. This would mark the dawn of a new era in space travel. Space distances are primarily measured in terms of the speed of light. According to estimates, light travels at a speed of 299,792,458 meters per second, a speed that seems only possible in Star Wars. But then again, the speed of sound was nearly unreachable at one point as well. Currently, we have a jet that can quadruple that speed, but the rate of sound and the rate of light are vastly different. Space is just too vast, with current technology getting anywhere in space would take quite some time. Even reaching the nearest nearby stars and planets would take years. It would take no less than 78,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri using the new Frontiers spacecraft, which flew to Pluto at 58,000 kilometers per hour. Imagine trying to reach another star in the same amount of time it takes us to go to the moon. For us to truly explore space and be true pioneers, we need better means of transportation. Traveling at the speed of light would take us to the moon right away, to Mars in a few hours, and finally to the stars above. But speed is not the only problem we'd face. We'd also need fuel to push through the cosmos, which is where the problem lies. This light engine would not only need to be fast, consuming a significant amount of fuel, but also need to be able to conserve enough energy to last for years. Although a fuelless engine is not an entirely new concept, previous events have been made at creating such devices. Robert Cook patented an engine in the late 1970s that converted centrifugal force into linear motion. A British inventor named Roger Sawyer proposed it in the early 2000s, claiming trapped microwaves could be converted into thrust. 
In particular, the M drive has been referred to as the impossible engine because it consists of a container with microwaves bounced inside it, supposedly moving due to these bouncy microwaves. We have no idea how it works since the explanations go beyond our current understanding of physics. Testing this device could reveal previously unknown laws of physics or change our understanding of physics. Several research groups claimed in 2001 to have measured a net force coming from their devices, but the force they measured was so small that it could not move paper. There will be a recurring problem with all these impolite people because of this inefficiency. Since the prototype was created, scientists have discovered that the engine's inefficiency outweighs their utility. We would have to build a skyscraper-sized structure to generate any significant thrust from the helical engine. However, NASA engineer David Burns, who has been working on this problem independently, claims that he has developed an engine design that could accelerate nearly as fast as light. Incredible! This is true, but it gets better. The engine wouldn't need propellant at all. In the helical engine developed by NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama, David Burns exploits mass-altering effects that occur at near light speed. NASA's technical report server has published a paper on Burns' concept. Burns believes that his concept is worth pursuing, despite skepticism from some quarters. I have no problem putting it out there, he says. Even if it doesn't work, I'll be the first to admit that it was worth a try. The engine was submitted to NASA and made public on October 11, 2019. The author describes in great detail how this futuristic ship can be pushed into orbit using in-space engines that do not need fuel in his article. But how does it work? It exploits the flaw in Einstein's theory by speeding a loop of ions up to near light speed and then adjusting their velocity and mass according to the laws of relativity, allowing the engine to go ahead without having to fire anything behind it. Here's where it gets tricky. In order for this engine to work, a particle accelerator, as well as ion particles, would need to be employed. Using the mass-shifting phenomenon near light speed, the spaceship is supposed to launch into space without fuel. Considering the engine is said to travel at the speed of light, this could be used to describe the rules of physics. In spite of this, the moment David Byrne's paper was published, there was uproar among the entire space community. It has been suggested that the very foundation of this new engine violates the laws of physics. Other people, on the other hand, argue that the entire concept is excellent on paper, but impossible to build in a size and power large enough to work. Robert Cook's engine and the drive were never successfully demonstrated, and both violated conservation laws. As a fundamental physics principle, conservation of momentum states that in the absence of any physical forces, a system's momentum remains constant. As such, a helical engine should not be feasible, but there is also a particular relativity loophole. In contrast to the other machines, the helical engine uses special relativity, in which mass accumulates when an object approaches the speed of light. In Burns' picture, a helix-shaped accelerator generates a net push in one direction. Burns envisions replacing the box and ring with the accelerator. The engine would then accelerate the ions in the loop to a moderate relativistic speed before varying their velocities to alter and change their mass. The ions are moved back and forth in the direction of movement to produce thrust. The only moving parts of the engine would be the ions, moving in a vacuum line within the electric and magnetic fields. Yet to be reviewed and tested, many are already debating whether the concept will be successful. A number of core physical laws will be called into question if it proves successful. According to others, it will not necessarily defy the laws of physics, but rather expand our understanding of them. Be aware that anything new will always pose some challenges, especially anything that has never been done before. NASA's helical engine has many aspects to consider. To work, the machine would need to be 200 meters long and 12 meters wide and would make it unsuitable for space travel. In addition, it would have to be extremely powerful, requiring nearly 165 megawatts of energy to generate a single neutron of thrust, which would be extremely challenging. In other words, it is a very inefficient engine that would require a frictionless environment to work properly. Even so, if there was enough time and power, this machine might be able to reach near light speed using Einstein's special relativity. At the moment, the helical engine is still only on paper, but it certainly opens up new possibilities. NASA may be able to give this engine a serious try if they have the resources and manpower.